Excellent. Good morning. Welcome or, or good afternoon, good evening or good night. Whenever you're uh, joining us, uh, whether here live, we've got Mia on the laptop, we've got Teresa here beside me, or whether you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook later in the day, we're so glad you're taking some time uh, to join us for some just a time of devotions around God's Word. Uh, just quick summary before we just do that. Uh, what we do uh, and it's been our pattern for these last number of weeks, and we're finally getting the tech to catch up with, uh, with what we're wanting to do, is we're going to just read a portion of scripture uh, that comes right out of the Bible reading plan that uh, some, many, some of us follow here at Gateway. It's available on our website uh, on, under the, uh, the resources tab. Uh, you can grab it there as well and follow along. But uh, today we're going to read uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and 2, so why not right now open your Bible, grab a coffee, which I forgot my coffee this morning, Me so too. I'll, get, I'll get it after, uh, after this. But what we'll do is we're going to follow, the, basically follow the SOAP method, uh, which again, many of us are familiar with. Uh, S stands for scripture, O stands for observation, A, application, P is prayer. And so we're going to read a scripture, uh, the, cha- the chapters today, normally just one, but today we'll read two chapters because they're a bit shorter. And as we do that, we want to say, Lord, would you cause a verse or two to stand out to my heart today, to my mind today, uh, so that we can then meditate on it, consider it, uh, observe what is it saying, what are we being taught in this passage? Uh, and then A is sometimes the challenging one. Uh, I used to teach students at uh, the Comox Valley Christian School. Well, now it's called Gillardi, but uh, uh, just about Mia's age, actually. And we used to, I taught them the SOAP method, and they all did the scripture one well. They all did observation well. Application was the hard one, because they always wanted to apply it to all Christians or apply it to every person everywhere and had a hard time saying, I, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Lord, this is what you're speaking to me. me. And it's the point of a devotion, and most often we're doing this on our own. And it's not bad to listen for others, but we've got to start by listening to, for what the Lord has to say for me. to us mm-hmm. as a disciple, as a follower of Jesus. And so that's the application question. What is this speaking to me today? And I don't know, for different ones of us, I know for me in my role as, as a pastor, a local pastor, often I have to fight that urge as I read, to start planning another sermon, because that's not the goal of devotion time. That that, that's another time. That's a time for study, time for devotion, time for all of those sorts of things. Um, and then, uh, but that's what we're going for. Individual, Lord, what do you have to speak to me today? And as we share those things later, it'll be fantastic. We'll encourage one another. And then the P for soap is prayer. We'll wrap up in prayer. But how about we begin with prayer, and then I asked Teresa if she would read uh, the text for today, and we may pause and stop in the middle and, and add some insight. Uh, and then at the end, we'll kind of do a, ra- a good go around of this is what we're hearing. And for those of you joining uh, later, uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts uh, in the comment section uh, on YouTube or even on Facebook, uh, just to be able to kind of keep that conversation going as well. And so let me pray, and then we'll, we'll dig into the Word. Father, we thank you so much for a new morning of your mercies, mm-hmm. of your uh, work in our lives, another opportunity today to hear your voice speaking. And so, God, I, we just give you this time as we set aside, whether it's right now as we're recording this, uh, or it's another time where people are joining in. God, we give you these moments and God, we're, we're, t- we're turning our ears to you. We're focusing our attention on you today. We need to hear you. We thank you that your word is life to us. And Jesus, we also thank you that as we stay connected to you, you're the vine, we're the branches, that life will flow. And so we're coming to you today, full of ha- hearts full of faith, ears open to hear what you're wanting to speak. So would you reveal yourself to us by your spirit and your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, Teresa... Take it away, First okay. Thessalonians. Uh, Second Thessalonians. Oh, Second Thessalonians. One Oopsies. and two. <laughs> one and two. That's the one. Uh, and in First Thessalonians, this is this letter of Second Thessalonians is just to correct what he had said in the first one, <laughs> because they took it literally that Christ was coming, that he was immediately going to be on the scene, and it felt like kind of like right now, uh, in what we're going through, that 
we could have almost taken it the same way. Or right now, we could. We could take it the same way. I guess I can stop working. I don't have to do anything. And I'm just confessing what I felt like when I was reading it. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Silvanus and Timothy to the church of the Thess Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brethren, as is only fitting, because your faith is greatly enlarged, and the love of each one of you toward one another grows even greater. Therefore, we ourselves speak proudly of you among the churches of God for your perseverance and faith in the midst of all your persecutions and afflictions which you endure. This is a plain indication of God's righteous judgment so that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which indeed you are suffering. For after all, it is only just for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you. Hmm. And I want to just jump in, because this is the context of that for Second Thessalonians and, and First. They're obviously so tightly put together. Um, it's so interesting for us to hear what, what's going on here. Paul is saying, hey, you guys are doing an amazing job in the midst of persecution, afflictions, and all these things. And then he goes on even to encourage them that this is actually, you know, they're being considered worthy of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so I think especially in our, you know, this is my take, this is not my takeaway for the day, but I think just a highlight to kind of bring to this, this passage here, that they're in the midst of suffering, persecution, difficult times. And Paul doesn't say to them, you guys are doing it wrong. Right. You, you guys are bringing this on yourselves. You don't have enough faith. You know, you're bad Christians. That's not what he says to them. He says, no. actually, your suffering is indication that you've been counted worthy of the kingdom of God. Isn't that incredible? And, and, and also that indication here, too, is not that he's promising them a short removal, mm -hmm. a short-term removing of persecution. And again, I just want to highlight that. We need to just kind of sit in that for a second of, it's not, oh, you're having persecution. Oh, uh, just, you know, pray it away and it's going to be gone tomorrow. No, right. that's it's not what he says, says here at all. Or you deserve it. Or you not, yeah, he's also not saying that, that you deserve <laughs> it. But he, this, there's an indication in this that God is at work. And, and then it's interesting in the rest of this, how he brings them encouragement in the midst mm -hmm. of their persecution and suffering rather than a, a, a kind of a pat little like, you know, hope you get out of it soon. No, no, he right. gives them a really solid reason to, uh, and a solid way to navigate through that in mm -hmm. faith. But it's just interesting the way he talks about suffering. It's probably not the way we want him to talk about suffering. No, we figure that's not for us. Kennedy. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But here, these guys, the Lord is counting them worthy of the kingdom of God, that there's mm -hmm. even in the midst of this persecution... And so, yeah, keep reading, trees. <laughs> um, and I, I really like verse 6. For yeah. after all, it, it is only just for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you. And that's in his... We don't pray that way. Yeah. He said it. Yeah. We just thank you. And to give relief to you who are afflicted, and to us as well, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God, and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll just stop there for a second. And that's, uh, you know, maybe we feel like God should do that for me now, Lord, because... That's really bothering me, and they're persecuting me. <laughs> but he'll do it in his time, and, and our best is to pray, like First John 5, 16 says, to pray that God will forgive them, right? And, and Jesus prayed that, God forgive them. And these will pay the penalty of eternal destruction, away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he comes to be glorified in his saints on that day and to be marveled at among all who have believed, for our testimony to you was believed. To this end also, we pray for you always that our God may count you worthy of your calling and fulfill every desire for goodness and the work of faith with power, in order that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Pause. Wow. It just seems like we're closer to this mm. than ever, to me. That just, 
It's a good area to be reading in right now because the time is... Well, I think it's so imminent. interesting. As I was reading this today and pre preparing my sermon for Sunday, which I won't kind of give all the spoilers for, for mm -hmm. Sunday morning, but Daniel <laughs> chapter 7 is where we're going on Sunday. Right. And uh, it's a really challenging passage of scripture. It's apocalyptic. It's dramatic. It's talking about the end and destruction and nations and all of these sorts of things. And and uh, and then we come to read in Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians here today, just this kind of repeated thing of 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 kind of putting some bigger things in perspective. Right. Uh, we have our here and now experience, but then tying that into the grander story of it all, and saying, "Oh, okay, Lord, uh, what are you prepping us for? What exactly. are you encouraging us in?" Yeah. yeah. And it has this time has felt like a prep time, but also a rest. And I guess that's what he's teaching us, rest? Rest. But we're not in Hebrews right now, so. Here we go. Chapter 2. Mm -hmm. This is entitled, Man of Lawlessness. Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, that you may not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Some of that's going on right now on Facebook. Yeah. And I think, too, that, that, that highlight, too, that the day of the Lord is this big f repeated phrase throughout Scripture. The day mm -hmm. of the Lord, uh, of the return of Jesus, the consummation of all things. It's kind of this, you know, day of the Lord forward. But it encapsulates the grand wrapping up of all this sort of stuff. It's, anyways, and, 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 and the, key, the key focus for believers, the return of Jesus. Yes. Yeah, yeah which is imminent. Thank you, Lord. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God, excuse me, or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God displaying himself as being God. That'll go with Daniel 7. I, I think the little horn, yeah. 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 Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you these things? Mm -hmm. And you know what restrains him now, so that in his time he may be revealed. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he now, who now restrains, will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then that lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. Mm. Praise the Lord. Can I just say something about eight? I know it has a cross-reference down here, but yeah. um, uh, like what, we speak his word, and we don't have... We, ha we have the living Christ in us, mm. And when we speak his word, it's powerful. Yeah. And just that word right there, he will slay him with the breath of his mouth. And God, thank you that you use us with the breath in our mouth at times. That is, the one whose coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, with all power and signs and false wonders and with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. Do you have anything there? Well, I, I just, it's that, that, clear, that clear teaching that, again, sometimes in our modern, we want everything to be nice Christianity. Mm -hmm. We're afraid to talk about things like that, that, you know, and this is the second time even uh, there in, in the, the first chapter as well, uh, and now here again, talking about the reality that there is that there is judgment, that there's a consequence to rejecting the truth mm -hmm. and not receiving the Lord. And God's gracious offer, I love that thing, uh, that God's desire that everyone would be saved. Amen. But that doesn't mean that everyone will be saved in some kind of... Oh, eventually it'll all work out. No, there's no. a call for us even as believers to make sure we're telling people and clearly communicating mm -hmm. what, God is, what God is saying. And it is yeah. time. Yeah. And for this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so that they might believe what is false in order that they all may be judged who did not believe the truth 
but took pleasure in wickedness. I think of Pharaoh, mm. where he was deluded, wasn't he? Yeah. But we should always give thanks to God for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and faith in the truth. And it was for this he called you through our gospel, that you may gain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brethren, stand firm and hold to the traditions which we, you were taught, whether by word of mouth or by letter from us. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope, by grace, comfort, comfort and strengthen your hearts in every good work and word. Mm. Wow. That, uh, that last two, verse 16 and 17, we can pray about that. Yeah, <laughs> that's... It's powerful. Yeah. And again, kind of rounding out this thing of in the, in the thinking about this persecution that they're in, how does he comfort them? He comforts them by drawing their attention to the end, end times. Right. He, com he wants to comfort them by giving them the context mm -hmm. that there is some stuff that's going to happen and shake down mm -hmm. on a global scale. Uh, but also he makes it really clear to us that Jesus wins and that those are, who are with him win. And, mm -hmm. and so the promise isn't immediate removal of their, per, of their persecution, but that God in his justice in the right time mm -hmm. will avenge those that have come against them, Amen. but that also would rescue them. They'd be with the Lord forever. So Thank you, Lord. in the midst of hardship, he points them to the return of Jesus. Mm -hmm. In the midst of this hardship, he doesn't promise a quick removing. He right. says, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of it, stand firm. Right. Don't give up. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep, keep in the word. Like keep, keep believing what you believe. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. And, and stand firm. As, as the Lord and I returns. think that's really good. Um, for, it's for like right now, like today. I just <laughs> When I was yeah. reading this, I thought, wow, I could just say, yeah, that's what's going on, right? Uh, and I'm sure a thousand years ago, they were saying the same thing, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like uh, with, with God, there is no time, right? The, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. So uh, this message was probably as clear to them then as it is to us now. But it's very real to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because his, his time is coming. It's, it's so near. Yeah. But verse 16 and 17... Uh, now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope by grace, comfort and strengthen your hearts in every good work and word. And, you know, I, I, while we're separated from, what do you call it, social, I think it's, it's not social, but uh, because we can still be social, even physical at six distancing, feet, yeah. physical di distancing, yeah. but uh, that we could be working now at this time. And uh, so where we live, we've got neighbors that call out to us, right? And more so now than ever because they're going through things. How are you guys doing? And then we, we do have an opportunity to, to share. Yeah. I'm, I'm peaceful. How come? Yeah. Right? Well, we have, we have the Lord yeah. and he's the giver of peace. And, but I, I really see this, the sense of working now while people's hearts are probably being touched by what's going on, right? And it's a, a good time to, to go in and speak. Keep on. Amen. Amen. It is. So what's our, let's do the, there's a lot of observation. It's, a, it's a, a beautiful, powerful passages of scripture here, particularly in some of its clarity of teaching on the end times. Mm -hmm. And again, there's some areas here that if we would do a line by line study, we'd want to talk about the man of lawlessness right. and who is that? And will that be a real person? And all these sorts of questions would be interesting to look at. I think it will be a real person and, mm -hmm. and all these sorts of things. But we, we get the big sweep of what, what the scripture is trying to teach here. Jesus is coming back. That's our hope. That's our ground of Amen. comfort and, and uh, that work of the Lord in us. But Let's, let's take, I'll, I'll go first, okay. uh, which is what was your takeaway? What was your scripture for today in your life? And so for me, um, in chapter one and verse 11, uh, just kind of hit me right where I'm at. It's uh, to this end, we always pray for you 
that our God may make you worthy of his calling mm. and may, and this is the, here's the, the key part for me, and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. And so I, mm. just as I'm kind of hearing that again, and I've obviously I've read it before and it's something that I kind of will mull over a lot, but I, I had forgotten where it was in scripture. It's a meditate, a scripture that'll come to my mind, but I often forget the address. Uh, so now I'm happy I know the address again. Mm-hmm. Amen. But that, that sense there of this prayer that Paul, Paul prays for them, that as they resolve to do good, as they resolve to serve the Lord, as they resolve to share the word, as they resolve to be faithful in persecution, as they resolve for all these good things that they're resolving to do, and for every, every work of faith that they're wanting to do, Paul is praying that they would, that God would do all those things by his power. Mm-hmm. And so I just, anyways, just that own encouragement in this season, you know, there's been a lot of stretching and there's a lot of unknowns and, and even some of that, that sense of like, you know, Lord, what are we going to do? And not yeah. in a sense of fear. That's not where no, I'm coming from. But just in the like, Amazement. actually, what are we going to do? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, out of all the options that we have, right. which one are we going to do? Right. And there's a resolve to do good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and I know I can often get myself into the place of, because uh, I have, the Lord has given me some, and I don't think it's a boast at all, but I think the Lord's given me some abilities in a number of different areas. You're gifted. And, and so that I can do, there's some things that I can do, but what I'm learning in this season and what this verse is encouraging me in today is I just receive it as a promise from the Lord that it's the learning to do it by his power. Yeah, amen. And it's not, amen. A, it's not a new revelation of like, no. I've never heard that before, but it's a timely word for today for me. So that's my... Scripture, my, my application is, Lord, you want to, that, that God wants to bring about every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. Amen. And so that's my, my personal application is, Lord, teach me how to skip into your power <laughs> more mm-hmm. consistently. Not that it's never, I've never relied, that's not what I'm saying, but I'm just, just being encouraged by the Lord today that he wants to do it. Mm-hmm. By his power. Yes, amen. And so that's the learning amen. curve for me. And that's, I think that's okay. And there's a rest in that. <laughs> there's a rest in that too, Teresa. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Because, um, and I've been there many times, right? When, when you're trying to figure out, well, what, you know, what am I going to do here, Lord? And it's, you know, just be at peace, yeah. right? I've got this. And just do what I ask you to do. And sometimes that's really hard, um, considering that, like, I've walked with the Lord for 40 years, and um, I know a lot of people, and I've been there with some people, and I'm not sure if I want to go there again, and then the Lord says, now's the time, right? And he gives you these words, sometimes without even letting you know that he's going to speak through you. Um, you, can, you can sense the, the Lord's presence in it, and gosh, that's the thing that just, like, goes it, it it yeah it's um and it's in his power it's in his timing and it's in his power and really uh he saved me and brought me in his time and there's nothing that anybody could do except give me what the truth was and what god was asking him to do at the time or her to do at the time amen what's your takeaway teresa <laughs> well for teresa because you had a lot of good insight for us today. But what's, what's for Teresa for today? What's the Lord saying? And while you're looking for it, I was, it's we've verse been, 13 and 2. Okay, we've, it's been fun. We've been teaching this to our children actually right now too at the same time. Oh, good. Um, they're taking a class out of California online. They're taking kids' discipleship. Oh, The same wow, church that put so out good. OSL is now trialing the first run of the kids discipleship online and so we're teaching Ooh. our kids to do the soap method in a kid version of it and That's it's been good. so much fun to ask wow. them what is the lord saying to you out mm-hmm. of this what do you see and hosea six and it's just so sweet to hear what it would be you know <laughs> he likes the time together which is really wonderful but it's right. neat as he's engaging with the word and so teresa what you were saying chapter two verse 13 13 But we should always give thanks to God for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation. Wow. Ah. 
through sanctification by the spirit and faith in the truth. And I think sometimes we, um, I won't say we, I'll say I, sometimes I think that, okay, I've had all this, this training, all this schooling, and now I have to use it, right? And so I'm actually looking to myself in that. And I know it is, it's, it's God that does the work. Mm. This, just by his presence in us, he's working. And sometimes I don't, well, maybe all the time, I don't really have to figure it out. God is, he already knows what it is. He already knows what it is for me as he's working his salvation out in me, but in others too. And I, th I know that I have in the past been more um, eager to let people know, well, this is, you know, like this is what it is. But today he's telling me, you know, they've got the presence of the Holy Spirit in them. And, and they're listening to me too. And you don't have to come up with the answer. Although sometimes he may ask me to. And then he totally surprises me. But it does really... Uh, bless me that, um, and and it's even like sometimes the way we pray and we think, well, God, if you would do it like this, like for somebody's salvation or whatever is going on, and then I think, you know what? He got me, and I was a hard one, and so I have to rest in that. That God's presence in us is bringing about our sanctification. Amen. Your micro. <laughs> I got this one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And it sat unused, so we're all okay. I was living Amen. on the edge. There's one bar out of the three bars on this microphone, and I was like, I'm going to live dangerously. Uh, there we go. But hey, Mia, I don't, not to put you on the spot, but what's the Lord's, what, what, what stood out to you today in those chapters? Um, I think chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, kind of like, these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of God and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and be admired among those who believe because our testimony among you is believe. Mm -hmm. But just that like, um, Kind of everyone deserves everlasting destruction, yeah. and that by like God's mm. grace we don't have it. Yeah. Right. Kind of have to share it, or else there's going to be more people who have everlasting destruction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a powerful word. It it's is. huge, and I, and I love that 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 context there, Mia. That uh, and, and even in that passage there is talking about. Um, when he comes that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at by all who have believed. And that'll be the marveling that we deserve that too, but you saved us. <laughs> and that, that glory that, that God gets all the credit, like all the credit for doing it. Anyway, such mm -hmm. an encouraging thing, but a powerful message for us to be encouraged. So Amen. to share that message. Amen. So Lord, enable us. Yeah. Enable us to do it. Yeah. Amen. Well, Thank let's, you, Lord. let's pray. Hey, I'm All just right. like, I love doing morning devotions with more than just myself and the spirit. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's really like, it's great to do that. And the, that's one of the, the best habits that we can develop. Daily Bible reading, mm -hmm. daily time in the yeah. word. And when we can share that with others, it just kind of adds fuel to the fire <laughs> of, of kind of just start. Well, I know for me in the morning, it, it sets, sets the tone for the day. It does. And uh, the lady yeah. that led me to the Lord gave me a little booklet, and it was called First Mornings with God. Mm. And, uh, and it was uh, a short form of, uh, of uh, the Gospel of John. Yeah. And, um, and that was a word for me. Yeah. First, do your time with God in the morning. Amen. Good. Well, let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Teresa, you want to pray first, and then I'll, I'll sure. bring Thank it home. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Father, you, Father. I, I love the time that we're living in for several reasons. And Lord, we know that you have softened hearts for us to be able to speak your truth into them. And Lord, we can rely on you 
and Holy Spirit in us to get us through these times, to have us uh, speaking to the, the people that you're already uh, speaking to and, and uh, moving in their hearts. And so, Lord, thank you for your grace multiplied to us at this time and that we can rest in it, Lord. To me, that is, that is big right now, that, Lord, we can rest in what you are doing and you know the end from the beginning. And if, so, Father, I just thank you for that. I thank you for Mia, Lord. And thank you for uh, the way that uh, you're working in her life and opening uh, her eyes to see uh, those that you're already preparing that she may speak to, Lord. Thank you, thank you Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. And, Lord, I just want to... I just pray the scriptures over us and over anyone else mm -hmm. watching today. Lord, I pray, mm -hmm. as Paul prayed as well, that God, that you would make us worthy mm -hmm. of your calling. And Lord, that you would fulfill every resolve for good mm -hmm. and every work of faith by your power mm -hmm. so that the, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified Jesus. in us. Yes, Lord. And us in him. Thank according you, to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, Thank I you, also Lord. pray Thank you, Father. That, uh, that the Lord Jesus himself and God our Father, who loves us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, God, I pray Jesus. that you would comfort our mm -hmm. hearts mm -hmm. and establish them in every good work and word. And so, Lord, we do. We want to be attentive. We want to be open. And we want to receive and walk in that comfort even in this season that in the midst of even trials, the midst of seasons where we're not sure what's going on, God, we want to be those that would be found worthy mm -hmm. to be speaking and sharing your word and doing Thank the works you, that you've prepared us, not laboring in our own strength, mm -hmm. but following your lead and operating in your power. Oh, Lord, we thank yes. you, God, for your ability you, to Jesus. use us to speak strong, powerful words to others. Mm -hmm. We thank you and we trust your work in our lives, God, that you called us. Thank you, Lord. You found us. You saved us. We rejoice in that today. Amen. And thank you for your continued work in and, in and through us. And even for today, God, I just speak your blessing over this day. God, we pray that our ears would continue to be open and attentive to your spirit. Thank speak, you, Lord. Lord. We're listening. Amen. In the name yes, of God. Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, so good to see you, Mia. And I uh, want to encourage you, encourage all of us that Amen. the Lord is good. He is at work in this season. Looking forward for, uh, to joining together this Sunday for our live stream at 10 o'clock. Again, I know we are in phase two of this COVID response and things like that. And we are praying and chatting uh, amongst uh, church council about what is what are some of our next steps going to look like. Uh, but we're certainly not going to make them hastily uh, or, or just kind of rash decisions. We're wanting to be thoughtful about how mm -hmm. do we engage safely again uh, with gatherings and these sorts of things. So it's on its way. Keep your ears peeled. We'll let you know. Uh, but would you be praying even for that as well? Uh, and with that said, we'll look forward to connecting with Gateway Live, 10 o'clock Sunday morning. Amen. And, or, or whenever else you watch, because it's, you know, if you're not watching at 10, that's all right. We still love you, and the Lord still loves you too. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> looking forward uh, to worshiping with you this weekend. Thank you, Teresa. Amen. Bless you. Thank you, Mia. Thank you. Blessings. Thank you, Pete. Over there, you can't see him from where you are at home. But Pete is over there on the, the soundboard, Faithful Pete. And, amen. Uh, amen. Have an awesome day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Amen. <laughs> awesome, Mia. Have a good day. Hit back. Say hey. Say hey.